Wu Tian, it is my great pleasure to present our work on multi-scale multitask distillation for incremental 3D medical image segmentation. Our co-workers include uh, Chen Zhu Yang and our lab leader, Dr. Yi Gao. We all came from Shenzhen University from China. Medical image segmentation, as we know, is the core component for many clinical applications, including, including computer-aided diagnosis and surgical planning. Manually labeling the boundaries of the target of interest is very time-consuming. Considering the expertise required and the 3D nature of medical images, substantial number of deep learning-based methods have been proposed in past years by exploiting local structures, and semantic similarities, elegantly designed deep, deep networks effectively addressed the common issue of noise, low contrast, blurring, and shape deformation in medical images. But deploying such methods in clinical applications faces certain difficulties. Conventionally, the common engineering workflow has three steps, data collection, offline training, and model update. Medical experts manually label sufficient amount of data and store them into a database. Then deep learning models get trained in an offline batchwise fashion. After training, the model is redeployed onto the cloud for serving. However, this paradigm suffers from serious issues in practice. Labeling images in 3D is very time consuming that requires substantial expertise. It is not realistic to expect clinical practitioners to label thousands of images within a short time period. Also, it is quite likely that the data distrib distribution could shift over time due to changes of patient cohort, equipment, imaging protocols, and practitioner's experience. Therefore, the trained model could quickly get outdated and unable to adapt to new data. It is crucial to develop a system that learns with sequentially arriving data while generalizes well to unseen instances. So far, incremental learning seems to be the rescue for us. When learning with uh, streaming data, catastrophic forgetting is the most fundamental challenge due to the shifts in learning tasks and data distribution. Two most common successful strategies to deal with catastrophic forgetting are data rehearsal and knowledge distillation. Data rehearsal keeps a memory of constant size to store past data that participates in training along with new samples. While knowledge distillation is an idea of preserving past experience by learning towards previous models' outputs. However, it remains unclear whether these strategies could be directly transferred onto manual image segmentation. The majority of existing work attempt, attempted to build task incremental benchmarks. Even for segmentation, the focus was on learning new semantic classes incrementally. However, for medical images, the shift in data distribution instead of semantic labels is the dominating source of variations in the stream. Even for images work, even the images were collected from the same equipment and clinician, these variations could still occur at unknown moments in the stream due to other factors. So, inspired by recent works that extended distillation scheme into task incremental learning, we developed a novel multi-scale multitask framework, particularly for the scenario of medical images. First, Similar to learning without forget, the prediction head in the network is used to simultaneously learn the new target and previous model's outputs. However, one fundamental difference to learning uh, one fun fundamental difference here is that um, learning without forgetting use separate classifier heads to distinguish old versus new tasks. In the case of segmenting a single target out of uh, out of the background, we only have one head under the learning without forgetting setting. Though this might work as, a, uh, uh, as an implicit label smoothing mechanism, the confusion between the new ground truth and, new, and old model's predictions could break the common configuration of distillation at incremental learning. To resolve the issue, we created a separate head, aka dual head, whose target is to solely predict 
previous model's outputs and thus formulating a multitasking structure. In the setting, the original head is still able to learn the precise ground truth without losing information, while the new head serves as a regularizer that keeps the model's cap uh, capacity of training of retaining all the information through preventing semantic representations from, a fra uh, from fluctuating too much. They still had structure balances the model's capacity of adapting to the new versus memorize, memorizing the past. Second, it is known that constructing distillation directly on high-level representations with a contrastive loss could further help to counteract catastrophic, uh, catastrophic, catastrophic uh, forgetting. In recent work, contrastive, contrastive pairs were formulated at locations belonged to to foreground classes. However, in our case, the extended class map delivers confusion rather than complement. It is important to carefully design new contrastive schemes that effectively leverages this overlapping map, where we propose a new contrastive distillation loss, similar but fundamentally different to that promotes the internally similarities at true positive locations while penalizing false positive and false negative positions of the old model. At the same time, the design also encourages discriminant distributions, uh, discriminant representations of the new model by incorporating background positions. Third, for medical images, U-shaped network architectures worked particularly well due to their capacity of capturing multi-scale information efficiently. Our proposed contrastive loss also include multiple, multiple scales, the bottleneck, bottleneck layer, the higher resolution vision representations in encoder and decoder at symmetric positions of, a, of any U-shaped network uh, could all contribute to a fusion of spatial similarities. In addition, we introduce uncertainty weighted and edge focused masking to make uh, to make the objective function more adaptive to important areas around the segmentation target. We have evaluated the proposed methods on two popular data sets of uh, for automated segmentation of prostate, uh, prostate structures and whole brain tumor. This table lists evaluation scores on test set. It is ex expected that the model performance could fluctuate across training steps uh, in our setting, where samples are arriving one by one. Therefore, we take running averages with a fixed window at several different positions in the sequence. We see that MS uh, MSMT tends to provide stabilized performance earlier in the training process. The left table shows that MS MSMT significantly outperformed the fine-tuning methods at the beginning, at the second half of the training sequence. The last two evaluations appear inferior to the single-head distillation strategy, but MSMT remains to be the most robust approach when summarizing all five scores in the sequence. Similar phenomenon was also observed for KD2, aka dual-head distillation, and ContNet2, aka dual-head bottleneck contrastive learning. This is, this is a demonstration that the proposed multitask distillation and contrastive learning could promote model robustness. When the rehearsal strategy is also involved, we also observed further gain from applying MSMT on top of rehearsal buffers of size 2 and size 4. It is also noted that the joint training did not provide absolute performance upper bound. This indicates that even assuming ac accessibility to all past data, if the training time is, re is required to be constant, it could be less beneficial to loop through all past sequence. That makes the model to overfit on earlier samples and undertrained on newer ones. Also, MSMT does not help in, M in MEM2, but provided limited improvements in the case of M MEM4. The reason would be that this particular data set, BRAS 2015, has a longer training sequence, and we may need more representative data on each round to activate the effect from distillation and contrastive learning. 
The figures shows more straightforwardly that MSMT stays significantly beyond other methods in long run with superior robustness. In the bottom figure, we see that joint training plateaus quickly, indicating the same reasons mentioning um, in the previous slide, that it is memorizing old samples without adapting to the new. We also provided qualitative evaluation to compare segmentation predictions across different settings. For samples from the uh, NCI dataset, we see, constant, we see consistently that MSMT helped to generate more precise predictions regardless of whether rehearsal is involved in training. For the first and third sample, MSMT significantly mi mitigated over segmentation. From the second sample, we see that MSMT could push the segmentation to align better with detailed structures along with the target, bad, uh, target boundary. This can be observed from the fifth sample when applying MSMT on top of MEM4. In the fourth sample, MSMT helped substantially to capture detailed structures without rehearsal, but it failed under, under MEM2. This indicates that when dealing with longer sequences of training data, a small memory buffer size might not work as well as MSMT. Okay, so far, this is uh, my presentation. I'm very happy to share the result and thoughts with uh, everyone here, and um, I'm open to questions. If you have any questions, I'm very ha happy uh, to have the discussion during the meeting or after the meeting. Thank you.